Hey ladies and gentlemen, Stephen here from Red Adolescence and welcome back to another video. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really do appreciate it and I hope that this video finds you well. In today's episode, we're going to be taking a closer look at a fragrance by the company Teo Cabanel. This is one of the three newest releases from the brand and this one is called Je ne sais quoi. So make sure to stay tuned. Now, before I begin my fragrance review of Je ne sais quoi by Theo Cabanel, I do want to mention that if you are a fan of fragrance related content, if you like fragrance reviews here on YouTube, but also top 10 videos, giveaways, unboxings, special guests, interviews, and pretty much anything having to do with fragrances, please do consider supporting this channel by subscribing to it. All you have to do is click on that red button in the corner. And of course, while you're at it, please be sure to enable notifications by clicking on the bell icon. This way, whenever I do put out these videos, they will get delivered straight to your feed. You never need to worry about missing any of my future uploads. Now, this is one of the three newest releases from the brand. They have two others, and it's part of a collection of fragrances called Les Expressions Parfumées. And this one is their tea-based fragrance. Of course, it contains mate and matcha, both of which I have consumed in the past, and I actually really like consuming matcha tea. And it also has this rice note on top. Now, of course, it's a French expression after which it's named je ne sais quoi. And je ne sais quoi literally translates to I don't know what. And it's an expression that is used to basically describes something that is indescribable, right? Some extra quality of something that is really likable. And this fragrance definitely has that. Although you look at the note breakdown and it's rather transparent, you have the sandalwood and you have the guayac wood, you have the vetiver, you have the mate and the matcha and the rice. There's still something about it, this toasted quality, this undertone of sweetness about it that I really do love about this composition. And this really just broadens horizons for somebody who is really into tea based fragrances, but they don't want a run-of-the-mill tea-based fragrance. This one is exceptional in my book, and it does have that je ne sais quoi about it. I'm excited to give you more of my thoughts regarding the smell. Let's start things off with the presentation. So the box for this one is very, very nice. You just have this sleeve here on the front. It comes off on the side here, and the sleeve has the crest of the company towards the top. It also has the name of the fragrance in the middle the name of the fragrance once again at the very top. And then on the side, you have some information on the company and the fragrance. Here you have the box with this pretty cool pattern on it. The box opens up to reveal the silhouette of the bottle. The bottle for this one is also very, very nice. You can tell it has this tan colored cap that actually changes in color as you rotate it a little bit. And then you also have this green liquid on the inside here with the again matcha and the mate and these other ingredients. You can definitely see the influence of these ingredients in the color of the liquid. There's a sticker on the bottom with your information. The cap for this fragrance does not click into place, but it is a snug fit, so you can pick it up from the cap. And the distribution on the atomizer is very wide. Let's continue with the smell. So in the opening of the smell, you have that starchy quality coming from the rice note, but you also have that tea-like quality, that earthiness and that herbal aromatic property that is brought forth. And you get that combination of these two ingredients right from the onset. And it's such a likable combination and it's something that is so different and so unique, but definitely transportive, calming, and meditative at the same time. Now, there is a subtle sweetness to this fragrance and it's lurking underneath and it's probably coming from the tolu balsam because a lot of that balsamic richness can translate into a subtle sweetness in the case of a lot of resins, not just tolu balsam, but it could be labdanum or benzoin or any number of other resins. Galbanum is a little bit on the the green side but this one definitely possesses that green quality and it's coming from the matcha i think it's also coming from the mate the mate is definitely lending a smoothness to this fragrance but there's also a touch of vetiver in the base that really contributes that earthy power to the fragrance that i think creates that longevity from top to mid to bottom. So it's not like it opens one way and then it quickly devolves into something else. I think it's pretty consistent in terms of the theme and the kind of vibe that it's giving across. Now, of course, that starchy quality that you're going to get from that rice note in the opening, which is so realistic and so unique and different for a fragrance, 
it does sort of last into the heart and into the base. So it's not short lived, it's not ephemeral, it's not like it's there lurking in the top for like 20, 30 minutes and then it quickly evaporates. It's something that really contributes to the unfolding of the fragrance and you can see it's present in all aspects of the pyramid. This is very calm, it's very transcendent, it's meditative, it's definitely the type of fragrance you spray on when you wanna be put in a good mood, and that subtle sweetness just lends this likable aura to the fragrance that takes it away from the bright, fresh, clean territory. You know, when you think of a lot of other tea-based fragrances, perhaps the Bulgari offering Eau Parfumé Eau Té Vert, that one is a very realistic green tea fragrance, but it's very smooth, it's kind of on the plain side, very realistic, like I said, but it's a little bit plain for my taste, despite how much I actually do enjoy it. And then of course you have Gucci Porom 2, which is a little bit on the herbal side of things. In the case of this fragrance, you have that starchy quality from the rice, you have that undertone of earthiness lending that specific prowess to the fragrance. And then you also have that tolu balsam sweetness that's lurking underneath it all. But it's not a vanilla sweetness, it's not a cloying sweetness, no aspect of this fragrance is cloying. But it's really interesting to be able to smell it and to think to yourself, wow, there is a, a special something lurking in this fragrance, a je ne sais quoi, that I really enjoy about the overall smell and the aroma. And I do find that Teo Cabanel's uh, releases are very unique. That's something that the brand certainly has going in its favor. I've never smelled anything from that brand that I thought was redundant or reductive or something that I was able to pin back to another fragrance that I've smelled. They all stand out. They're all works of art, olfactory works of art. And I'm very happy to have this one in my collection. Let's go ahead and finish things off with my overall assessment. So first up, in terms of the uniqueness and the overall smell, like I just said, this is an incredibly unique fragrance. There is no other fragrance on the market that I have encountered and I've smelled that smells quite the way that this one does. And the overall smell, despite the fact that it is a little bit artistic and experimental, it's so easy to wear, it's so easy to love, and it's so easy to get along with. There is nothing about this fragrance that is daring or challenging or pushes any envelopes or anything like that. Very likable aroma. And I have met very few people that didn't like the smell of tea. And so I have a strong feeling you're going to love the mate and the matcha and that earthiness, that starchy quality from the rice. Really, really cool composition. The longevity on this one is also great. I got about seven hours on my skin. The projection was fantastic for the first two hours of application. It became a skin scent right around that five hour mark. But if you want to reapply, because I personally love the opening when I can get all of those ingredients at once. So I do find myself playing or uh, applying this fragrance at least twice in a day. And so I might do it in the morning and then right around the afternoon time, I will spray it on again. In terms of the versatility, perfectly unisex. I can see anybody of any age wearing this one. I can see this one being worn in any season. While for some people, the you know, tea vibe might give off like a subtle quality, so they might wanna wear it when it's a little bit hotter outside. But like I said, you have the rice, you have the vetiver, you have the guayac wood, you have the sandalwood, you have the tolu balsam. These are all ingredients that are appropriate for the cold weather as well. So I think this is a year round fragrance, super unique. And again, just to reiterate and drive the point home, perfectly unisex. And in terms of the presentation, I like how they have different designs and different graphics and they'll play around with a different uh, patterned or colored cap. And so I actually do quite like that about the brand. So my final verdict on this fragrance is if you are looking for one of the most unique tea-based fragrances that you will likely encounter in your fragrant journey, I would highly recommend checking out uh, Je ne sais quoi by Theo Cabanel. I think there are a ton of really great tea fragrances, whether we're delving into the arena of chai, there's something like chai by Baruti, or if you want a very smooth, clean green tea fragrance like Eau Parfumé Eau Té Vert by Bulgari, or if you want something that is a little bit on the darker side of things, there are a lot of those out there as well, but this one with the rice and the matcha and the balsam in the base, really awesome fragrance, super unique, and I would highly recommend that you go out there and get a sample of this one at the very least so that you can see exactly what's going on in this blend. 
So thank you so much for tuning in, ladies and gentlemen. I really do appreciate it. That was my fragrance review of Je ne sais quoi by Theo Cabanel. If you own or have tried this fragrance, I would love to know what you think. Leave a comment down below. Also, if you have any experience or familiarity with this brand, I would love to know what is your favorite offering from this company. Also, leave a comment down below. I would love to start a dialogue with you guys, and I always love reading your comments. Once again, if you are new to this channel and you took something of value from this video, please do consider supporting this channel by subscribing to it. All you have to do is click on that red button in the corner. And again, while you're at it, make sure to enable notifications by clicking on the bell. Thanks again for watching. I love you all, and we'll see you in the next episode. Bye.